In this example problem, we're going to use the thermal resistance method to solve for intermediate temperatures in a thermal circuit. This problem states that a skin thermocouple is used to measure the temperature at the interface of a steel pipe and a layer of insulation. Because of the corrosive conditions of the fluid inside the pipe, the inner pipe temperature cannot be measured directly. If the interface temperature, the ambient temperature, the thermal conductivities, and the outer convective coefficient are known, what is the inner pipe temperature? Okay, so in this very practical, this is a very real problem. Let's say you could only measure temperature on the outside of a pipe, and then you had to infer, based on laws of heat transfer, what the temperature is on the inside of the pipe. This fluid inside is corrosive, and we can assume that it's hot. So we don't want to put a thermocouple here because it would corrode and it wouldn't last very long. So can we infer what that temperature is based on other things that we know? So we are told that we know the ambient temperature, T infinity. So we can measure temperature out here. That's a really easy thing to do. Okay, so how do we go about solving this problem? I would invite you to pause the video and based on what you know now of thermal resistances, just take 30 seconds and think about how you might go about solving this problem. Okay, so one thing that we can do to solve this problem is we know that, and again, I've made the assumption that the pipe, the fluid inside the pipe is hot. That doesn't necessarily have to be true, but for this visualization, let's assume it's hot so that heat is flowing out. So if our system is at steady state and we have constant thermal conductivity um, through our, our pipe and our insulation and those do not generate, then we can assume that that total flow of heat going from the fluid out to ambient is going to be constant as a function of R. So if we measure the total flow of heat and integrated the flux all the way around, we'd find that the total flow of heat is constant. So we can quantify that total flow of heat in a couple of different ways by defining different thermal circuits. So first of all, we can say that, so first let's assume a certain length of the pipe, let's call that L, and we'll just because we're just asked for this intermediate temperature, we're hoping that the L will cancel out eventually. So we'll assume some length. We can just say that that's one meter. So first we could quantify our total flow of heat knowing the temperatures that we do know. So we know this interface temperature, let's call that TS2. We do not know this temperature, let's call that TS1. The outer Insulation temperature, let's call that TS3. And finally, we would have T infinity, the ambient temperature. So going from TS2 out to ambient, we're going to have two thermal resistances. So we would take this temperature difference, TS2 minus T infinity, divided by the total thermal resistance between those two points, and that would tell us the total flow of heat. So let me go ahead and draw that thermal circuit while I to help visualize. So remember the nodes represent temperature. So here is TS2. And here we're going to have R conductive, and let's call that R conductive insulation. Then we have TS3. And between TS3 and ambient, we're going to have a convective thermal resistance. And finally, our last temperature is T infinity. So let's quantify the total flow of heat for that thermal circuit. So we get our temperature difference on top, TS2 minus T infinity. And then because these are thermal resistances in series, we can simply add them to get the total thermal resistance between those two points. So here we get R cond of the insulation plus the convective thermal resistance. Okay, good enough. Now we can use this fact that uh, if there's nothing being generated between here and ambient, well, we can also say that's also equal to Q out. So Q out defined with this other temperature difference would be TS1 minus T infinity divided by the total thermal resistance. Let's draw the thermal circuit here first. So here we have TS1. This goes through a thermal resistance. Let's call this R conductive uh, pipe because that represents the thermal resistance going through the actual pipe wall. Here we would get TS2 and here we have the thermal conductant, I mean, the thermal resistance of the insulation. Here we would have TS3 
3. And finally, we'd have T infinity. And between TS3, that outer surface temperature, and T infinity, we certainly have the R convective. So we have a convective thermal resistance there. So uh, one thing that you can see by inspection is that this thermal circuit that we drew first is really just a section of this thermal circuit. But that doesn't really do us much good. However, we can we can equate the two, because these are both calculating the total heat flow out of our system, we can equate those two things and that will uh, let us set up an equation where we can solve for the unknown temperature. Okay, so now that we know what those thermal resistances are in the denominator here, we can go ahead and add them together because they're in series. So we get R cond pipe plus R cond insulation plus R convective. Okay, so now we can indeed equate those two things. So note that here we have a larger temperature difference which is balanced out by a larger thermal resistance. Here we have a smaller temperature difference which is balanced out by a smaller thermal resistance, but the ratio of those two things delta T over R total is still the same. It's still um, equal to Q out. So what we could do now is just we have one equation and one unknown. We can just solve that equation for our unknown, which is TS1. So solving for TS1, we get that TS1 is equal to our ambient temperature plus this known temperature difference. And then this is just going to be multiplied by the ratio of the thermal resistances. So here we would get R, R cond pipe plus R cond insulation plus R convective thermal resistance. And then we divide this through by R con of just the insulation plus R con. So this is how we solve for it. So the, uh, the only thing left to do now is to go through and define each of those thermal resistances. So for convection, so our R con is equal to 1 over H A, which in this particular case is 1 over 2 times pi times L times R3 times H. So here is our area. And I neglected to define these different radii. So here we're going to have R1 is the inner pipe radius, R2 is the outer pipe radius, and then R3 is the outer insulation radius. So because this the area that it's convecting corresponds with the outer uh, surface area of the insulation, we use R3 there. Okay, so that's how we would define R conv in both the numerator and the denominator. Remember that it's the same thermal resistance. So we would just go and substitute those in. Okay, so how do we get the thermal resistance for the conductive layers? So here is where it's really handy to use this table from the book. You don't have to memorize these necessarily. After you do this for a while, it may start to just be more familiar to you. So we are looking at a cylindrical wall, and what we want is the total thermal resistance. So we can grab that term. Note that this is saying by R2 over R1, this means the outer radius over the inner radius, whereas we'll de we're dealing with multiple radii, so we'll have to modify that a little bit. So let's go ahead and define this. So let's look at what our conductive thermal resistance is through the pipe. So based on that table, we get this is the natural log of R2 over R1 divided by 2 pi L K. Now this K is specific to the material um, to which the thermal resistance corresponds. So this is the K pipe. So this would likely be stainless steel or carbon steel or something. Um, so we would just have to look, look that up or it would be given to us in a problem. So if we have R conductive of the pipe, then we can just substitute that in here. And there's one thermal resistance left to find, and that is the conductive thermal resistance of the insulation.
So the thermal conductive resistance of the insulation is equal to natural log. And now we have to be careful here because the insulation is going between radius 2 and radius 3. So we would use those instead of 2 and 1. And now we get 2 pi L K insulation. So the thermal conductivity of the insulation. So now we've got this one covered. So we know everything in this equation and we have successfully solved for this inner surface temperature without having to do any extra measurements which could be expensive and require a lot of maintenance.